to the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. My name is Jacob Beach. This is my beautiful wife, Mrs. Beach. We're here to talk about the History Channel's new show alone, specifically Episode 7. So, first we're going to talk about Mitch. Ryan, what did you think about Mitch in this episode? Well, we can see a definite um, decline in Mitch's motivation. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, he basically came right out and said that he doesn't want to be there anymore. Um, so I don't know. We, I don't know how long he's going to last. It just seems like he's really drained out. Um, now, Mitch did catch a, uh, it almost looked like a catfish, but I don't think it's called codfish, Okay. Kind of like a catfish, but anyway. <laughs> um, he caught that fish, but he absolutely made the right decision by not eating that fish. Um, it, it, was just, a little, it was a little rotten and old. Yeah, which he said that it just, it reeked. So anytime an animal stinks or, you know, its, it's flesh was... Just falling off. Yeah, I, I would steer clear. But you could use it as a bait to catch other fish or to maybe even trap something bigger. I don't know if you'd want to mess with a cougar, but it would probably get a cougar's attention. So either way, I'd be careful if you don't want to catch a cougar, be careful where you're using that bait. Um, but yeah, I would definitely use it as bait for sure. Yeah. Um the first thing that was really a bummer about this fish situation is that if he had checked his net the day before, he probably mm -hmm. would have been able to eat it. He was pretty frustrated with himself about that. You know, I don't know what he was doing the day before to, right. uh, that didn't allow him to go check it, but that's one of those things in survival. Instead of just uh, saying, oh man, I could have ate this fish today, this is kind of a bummer. It's a little bit more serious at this point. Right. Oh, I could have had a full meal yesterday. Yeah. Um, and survival is about taking advantage of opportunities. And again, you know, I really feel like he didn't do that with that fish. Yeah. Even if he didn't use it for bait for a cougar or something, he could have used it as bait for uh, crabs. Yeah, other, other fish. A, and, even yeah, a simple sure. fish funnel. Not not as intricate as what Alan made, but a simple fish funnel. Mm -hmm. That could have been just excellent bait in there. Yeah. So I think I think Mitch is becoming just um, like you said, wore out, kind of defeated mentally. Mm -hmm. He did say that he wanted to be there anymore. And to be honest with you, I think the nails in the coffin or that he lost his gilnet. Yeah. Because that's where he was getting, that's where he caught that giant salmon that made him so happy. And it seemed like that's where he's been getting a lot of his food is from he's, that net. He said it was his main source of food. Yeah. So he lost a huge, huge resource. You know, food is almost everything, you know. So that's, that's got to, that's got to hurt to lose something like that. Yeah. Now, I, I spoke a little bit with Lucas earlier about the cordage that he used to make his canoe. He found the cordage. It wasn't from any other person or from help from the History Channel or anything like that. He found some from a couple different sources washed up on the beach and wasn't able to videotape it. But my thoughts are if, if Lucas was able to find enough cordage to build that boat, surely Mitch could have found enough cordage to build a gill net. You know, hopefully hopefully this will not cause him to go home. Um, you know, maybe he can try to set up other traps and, you know, it is, it is a bummer to lose something like that, but I would, before I gave up, I would try to make other traps. There's other ways to catch fish than just a net. So. Well, and the thing is, I think that Mitch has enough skills to stay there as long as he has to stay mm -hmm. there. I think he lost the motivation he even 
last episode or the episode before. Yeah. And when it's hard to stay motivated when you're starving, when you haven't eaten in days, mm -hmm. and you have the option to just click a button and go home. That's what's really, I think, hard on a couple of these guys is it's hard, I think it's hard for Mitch to be motivated because his motivation is not if I don't pick myself up together, put myself together, and go make another gill net or find something else to do in this situation, I'm going to die. His motivation is, I want to win this money, but I could tap out at any time if I get too close to dying. When dying isn't an option, there is no other, there is no other option, there is no tapping out. I think we would see, you know, anybody would perform better, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's the mold on his clothes, the lack of food, or the lost net that really gets Mitch. I think, uh, I think he just doesn't want to be there anymore. So, Jake, what were your thoughts on Lucas this episode? Well, Lucas takes failure very hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to watch someone struggling when they're starving and when it's cold and when they're disheartened because Lucas didn't catch any fish and he sat down on the beach and cried. And what we as viewers see in our comfort is a man crying on a beautiful beach in probably one of the most beautiful places in the world, right by a sunset. Just It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful area. When I'm watching this TV show, I'm just like, wow, that's beautiful, and wow, that's amazing. Ask him. That's the <laughs> it's uh, so sure. So it's hard to relate to someone when they're starving and freezing and everything else and all you see is visual. But uh, I, I still think that he takes failure pretty hard. Um, I, um, he said that he loses his confidence in his ability when he fails. But, um, you know, he picked himself up. He said, you got to make hay when the sun's shining. Uh, he paddled back, found a nice fish on uh, on his little trout line, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I think Lucas is actually in a pretty good position right now. I think Lucas is doing pretty well. Yeah, think? I think so too. Now I also agree that Lucas takes failure very difficult, um, as we saw a couple episodes back. He was very, he kept saying that he wanted to do something great, this pressure. So he has that pressure that I'm not sure if the other competitors have. I don't know if the other competitors are being so hard on themselves like Lucas is. Um, but I absolutely think Lucas has some excellent resources as far as that canoe. Nobody else has that. Um, you know, the clam beach that he found, I don't know if he'll, he's going back and visiting that each time or what he's doing, but that's an excellent resource too. So I, I do think he's in a really good position. If he can just kind of let up off of that pressure that he's making himself have, um, if he can just try to relax a little bit, um, he could end up staying there quite a bit longer. Um, it's, it's just really going to depend, again, for Lucas, it's a, definitely more of a mental um, struggle that he's having, absolutely. It's a mental struggle, like we were saying, for everybody. And Lucas, I think, was mentally having a more difficult time than almost anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like the other competitors at this point, he has the skills. Um, and right now... I think mentally, Lucas might be in a better position than Sam or Mitch, which is, uh, I think, quite the toss-up from previous episodes. Yeah, I I would definitely say that, you know, at first Lucas was probably the one that struggled the most, um, you know, out of these four, and I think we're seeing 
just kind of a decline in Mitch. Um, it's just kind of been like this. And then with Sam, Sam's not as drastic, I think, as Mitch. But definitely, those three are certainly struggling as far as um, the mental game, for sure. So let's talk a little bit about Sam. Sam started out this episode talking about a mouse that he found uh, one morning when he woke up and uh, he got the idea that he could start trapping and eating mice. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, it's going to take a lot of mice to fill up one guy. So from what we can see as far as the trapping, it's a lot of work. Um, it's annoying because your traps are difficult to set up. And it's, it's a lot for something that's about this big to eat. And once you um, get rid of the skin and the organs and the fur and all that, there's a very little amount left there to eat. But it's absolutely better than nothing. Um, I think if, if he keeps setting traps, it could become, you know, more uh, replentiful as far as, you know, getting more mice and stuff like that. Um, but I absolutely think it was an excellent idea to set the traps, for sure. And it, it also gives him something to, something to do. That's very important. Um, according to the History Channel, a mouse contains about 35 calories. Now Luke, I'm sorry, Sam definitely spent more than 35 calories making the traps and working on these things. But like you right. said, there's, there's a high value to be had on keeping your mind busy. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I was wondering about, he hadn't used, it looked like much, if any, of his monofilament fishing line. And he was using that for those traps. And that looked like a much bigger pain in the butt to do than a normal figure four. Yeah. Um, the fin figure four doesn't require any type of uh, cordage at all. And uh, I think it's a little less finicky and can still have a really nice trigger. So that's one thing that I was wondering about is really it looked like he was using just kind of a modified figure four. It just looked like a lot more work. Mm -hmm. um, but he was really going for those mice. Uh, a guy would need to eat eight mice in a day to replenish the calories that he used just in that day. So um, it gets really frustrating for him. I loved it when Sam threw the rock down on the ground and said, God, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll just do it tomorrow. I, yeah. uh, that was a great scene for Sam, I think. And uh, he, he says he just he has an urgency for food and he's losing it. Um, I just felt that he was doing too much work for those mice and that his efforts, you know, maybe could have been better spent somewhere else. But, uh, but at least he got one. Mm -hmm. Ate it. He'll be there another day. Uh, I just hope that he can find a more reliable source of calories. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I have just been waiting to talk about Alan. This has been an exciting episode for me to watch what Alan's doing because um, <laughs> he's doing a lot of the things that I was wanting to do for this the whole time. Uh, the water bottle traps for bait. Um, even it, uh, the History Channel called it a yup ick. I just called it a fish funnel. In my survival video, I made a simple fish funnel just using rocks. But um, my long-term goal would have been a survival funnel just like what he used. And seeing him use that, you know, I'm just sitting there thinking, I can't believe it. He's doing exactly <laughs> what, you know, what I was thinking about doing. Um, so that was really, really exciting. Uh, he talked about God being merciful and talked about a little bit, a little bit of his faith. I think he touched on a little bit, um, and was talking about bringing his fish funnel home with him, which I thought was funny. And uh, and something that's really popular 
right now in the knife circles is the Baldrick sling setup. You notice, I've noticed the whole time, but I really just noticed this time that you had the Baldrick sling for, uh, I think, for his kukri. And that's just getting popular right now. I thought that was interesting. He used a similar design to my own design with the clip in the middle. So I was just watching that and thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. So, um, you know, Alan is, like he said, eating two meals a day. What do you think about uh, Alan's chances and how he's doing? I think that Alan is in an excellent, excellent position to be the winner of a of Um The fish traps were, the plastic bottle fish traps were highly successful. I was amazed with how much he got from those traps. I mean, it, it wasn't a tedious task. It didn't look like it was at all, you know, a difficult thing to do, and it was extremely rewarding. So he's using resources that he's finding, um, and that's that's excellent that, um, you know, he's able to get a hold of stuff like that. I was, I was expecting just a couple prawns. Um, I actually know that as a prawn trap. And you'll use the prawns for bait or put them on a hook or whatever the case may be. But when I saw how much fish he pulled out of there, those yeah. little guys, oh man, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to see what he gets with that fish funnel. Um, and I think Alan is in an excellent position because he's really the only guy who found a place to get a stable food supply where he is constantly um, you know bringing stuff in with his gill net or his traps or um, you know lipids off the shore he's constantly bringing stuff in um, whereas these other guys we don't see that so much um, and they're saying I'm starving I'm hungry you know it's and you know, Alan said that he's been eating two meals a day, which is, that's excellent. Um, so I definitely think Alan is in the best position right now. Um, and you know, he seems like his spirits are up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in this episode we didn't hear a whole lot of, you know, struggles. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there were some that he talked about and touched on. Um, but I think and this is my opinion, that him being out there is actually beneficial for him. Um, he's talking about how it's, um, you know, restoring his faith or, you know, he's having some spiritual stuff happening. Um, and I think he's in an excellent, excellent position for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So survival is about having shelter getting water and getting food. You need to have consistent food that you can rely on to really survive in a place and to thrive and stay in a place um, you need to have ideally a little bit of uh, variety in your diet and in your mm -hmm. lifestyle. For even the foundational elements of survival I think Alan's the only guy who's got it. Um, Unless catastrophe happens in my mind, there's there's no doubt that Alan will win unless something drastic happens. Right. So the question then becomes who's gonna quit next? We are at episode seven. Three episodes left out of ten. We've got three guys who have to quit. What do you think their order is gonna be? Um it is just, it's really hard to say, um, but I'm going to go with Mitch being the next one to go, uh, then Lucas, then Sam, and Alan being the winner. There's my pick. I'm going to have to I almost agree. I, think, I do think Mitch is going to be the next guy to go. He just lost his gill net. He's really been getting down. Um, I think he's an excellent, all of these guys are excellent survivors. All of these guys, I think, are, are really winners. I mean, they went out there and they showed that they have the right stuff. Um, and I think any of them could have won with different motivation. But I think that Mitch is going to be the next to go because of his gill net. 
think Sam might actually be after him. Yeah, just Lucas, because maybe the Lucas has his canoe and Lucas has a little bit more food. Yeah. Sam, I think, is starving. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna say Mitch will be next, then Sam, then Lucas. So. I don't know if we're going to see another full video where nobody quits and you see a lot of progression. That's really exciting. I mean, we went from now from day 23 to day 32. They've been out there for just over a month. And you know, most people are not going out surviving with no firearm or with only 10 items. Yeah. I mean, uh, especially out in this area. Like Alan was saying, the locals, the locals were laughing at him. Yeah. Uh, we're not seeing any bears anymore, probably because they're getting ready to hibernate. Yeah, and you have to think, um, they had mentioned that all of your wild edibles are not really around. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, your berries are not in full swing, and it's getting really, really cold. The temperature, they touched on temperature, what, it was 23 degrees? Or 20 degrees. That's, that's really, really cold. Absolutely. So, uh, it's going to be hard for me to see the next person quit. Uh, the, the last three episodes are going to be huge for me. I'm excited for everyone to come up. Um, tell us if you think we're wrong. Or uh, tell us what order you think these last survivors will uh, come up in. And stick around because I've had contact with uh, a few of the remaining survivors. Ask them some questions. And... Uh, I'm going to do another video just for uh, question and answer with them, so that'll be exciting. Uh, please subscribe, please share our uh, videos, watch our other videos, and uh, we hope to talk to you guys in this video and uh, in videos to come. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.